Chas of our Lord Sri Aurobindo. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, without care for time, without fear for space, surging out, purified from the flames of the ordeal, we shall fly without stop towards the realization of our goal, the supramental victory. With always our love and blessings, says our Lord, Sri Aurobindo. Sri Aurobindo's Savitri Book 1, The Book of Beginnings Canto 3, The Yoga of the Soul's Release Page 44, New Stanza Of Inspiration with her lightning fade, a sudden messenger from the all-seeing tops traversed the soundless corridors of his mind, bringing her rhythmic sense of hidden things. A music spoke transcending mortal speech, as if from a golden field of the all bliss, a joy of light, a joy of sudden sight, a rapture of the thrilled, undying word, poured into his heart as into an empty cup, a repetition of God's first delight, creating in a young and virgin time in a brief moment caught a little space all knowledge packed into great wordless thoughts lodged in the expectant stillness of his depths a crystal of the ultimate absolute a portion of the inexpressible truth revealed by silence to the silent soul. The intense creatrix in his stillness wrought her power, fallen speechless, grew more intimate. She looked upon the seen and the unforeseen unguessed domains she made her need to feel. Prayers and Meditations Date November 28, 1912 the outer life, the activity of each day and each instant, is it not the indispensable complement of our hours of meditation and contemplation? And is not the proportion of time given to each the exact image of the proportion which exists between the amount of effort to be made for the preparation and realization for meditation contemplation union is the result obtained the flower that blooms the daily activity is the anvil on which all the elements must pass and repass in order to be purified refined made supple and ripe for the illumination which contemplation gives to them. All these elements must be thus passed one after the other through the crucible before outer activity becomes needless for the integral development. Then is this activity turned into the means to manifest thee so as to awaken the outer centers of consciousness to the same dual work of the forge and the illumination. Therefore, our pride and satisfaction with oneself, the worst of all obstacles, 
Very modestly, we must take advantage of all the minute opportunities offered to knead and purify some of the innumerable elements to make them supple, to make them impersonal, to teach them forgetfulness of self and abnegation and devotion and kindness and gentleness. And when all these modes of being have become habitual to them, then are they ready to participate in the contemplation and to identify themselves with thee in the supreme concentration. That is why it seems to me that the work must be long and slow even for the best, that striking conversions cannot be integral. They can change the orientation of the being they put it definitively on the straight path, but truly, to attain the goal, none can escape the need of innumerable experiences of every kind and every instant. O oh, Supreme Master, who shinest in my being and in each thing, let thy light be manifest and the reign of thy peace come for all. Words of our Divine Mother taken from the question and answers of our Divine Mother's collected works of our Divine Mother. Question and answers year 1957-58, date 19 Feb 1958, page 271. The Supramental Ship Our Divine Mother says, The Supramental World exists permanently and I am there permanently in a supramental body. I had the proof of this even today when my earth consciousness went there and remained there consciously between 2 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now I know what is lacking for the two worlds to unite in a constant and conscious relation is an intermediate zone between the physical world as it is and the supramental world as it is. This zone, says our Divine Mother, remains to be built both in the individual consciousness and the objective world and it has been built. When I am asked to speak of the new world, says our Divine Mother, which is being created, it was of this intermediary zone that I was speaking. And similarly, when I am on this side, that is in the field of the physical consciousness, and I see the supramental power, the supramental light and substance constantly penetrating matter, it is the construction of this zone which I see in which I participate. A Divine Mother says, I was on a huge boat which was a symbolic representation of the place where this work is going on. This boat, as large as a city, is fully organized and it had certainly already been functioning for some time, for its organization was complete. It is the place where people who are destined for the supramental life are trained. These people, or at least a part of their being, had already undergone a supramental transformation for the boat itself and everything on board was neither material nor subtle physical nor vital nor mental. It was supramental substance. A Divine Mother says this substance was of the most material supramental, the supramental substance which is closest to the physical world, the first to manifest. The light was a mixture of gold and red forming a uniform substance of a luminous orange. Everything was like that. The light was like that. The people were like that. Everything had that color, although with the various shades which made it possible to distinguish things from each other. The atmosphere was full of joy, order. Everything went on regularly and in silence. And at the same time, one could see all the details of an education, training in all fields by which the people on board were being prepared. 
our divine mother says this immense ship had just reached the shore of the supramental world and a first group of people who were destined to become the future inhabitants of this supramental world were to disembark everything had been arranged for this first landing at the wharf several tall beings were posted they were not human beings they had never been men before nor were they the permanent inhabitants of the supramental world they had been delegated from above and posted there to control and supervise the landing a divine mother says i was in charge of the whole thing from the beginning and all the time i had prepared all the groups myself i stood on the boat at the head of the gangway calling the groups one by one and sending them down to the shore the tall beings were posted there they were inspecting so to say those who were landing authorizing those who were ready and sending back those who were not and who had to continue their training on board the ship a divine mother says while i was there looking at everybody the part of my consciousness which came from here became extremely interested it wanted to see and recognize all the people see how they had changed and check which which ones were taken immediately and which ones had to remain to continue their training after a while as i stood there observing i began to feel that i was being pulled back so that my body might wake up a consciousness or a person here in my consciousness i protested no no not yet not yet i want to see the people i was seeing and noting everything with intense interest things continued in this way until suddenly the clock here began to strike 3 and this brought me back violently there was a sensation of suddenly falling into my body i came back with a shock because i had been called back very suddenly but with all my memory i remained quiet without moving until i could recollect the whole experience and keep it our divine mother continues to say on the boat the nature of the objects was not the one we know on earth for instance clothes were not made of cloth what looked like cloth was not manufactured it formed a part of the body it was made of the same substance which took different forms it had a kind of plasticity when a change had to be made it took place not by an artificial and external means but by an inner operation an operation of consciousness which gave form or appearance to the substance life created its own forms there was one single substance in everything it changed the quality of its vibration according to the need and the use those who were sent back for fresh training were not of a uniform color it was as if their body had grayish opaque patches of a substance resembling earth substance they were dull as if they had not been entirely permeated with life not transformed they were not like that everywhere only in places a divine mother says the tall beings on the shore were not of the same color at least they did not have that orange tint they were paler more transparent except for one part of their body one could only see the outline of their form they were very tall they seemed not to have any bones and could take any form according to their need only from the waist down they had a permanent density which was not perceptible in the rest of their body their color was much lighter very very let a little red it was more golden or even white the part of the whitish light was transcurrent they were not positively transparent but less dense more subtle than the orange substance when i was called back and while i was saying not yet each time says our divine mother i had a brief glimpse of myself that is of my own form in the supramental world i was a mixture of the tall beings and the beings abroad the ship as for the people i saw on the boat i recognized them some of them were from here some of them from the ashram some came from elsewhere but i know them too i saw everybody but as i knew i would not remember them all when i returned i decided not to give any names besides it was not necessary 
three or four faces were very clearly visible when I saw them. I understood the feeling I had here on earth while looking into their eyes. There was such an extraordinary joy. People were almost young, were mostly young. There were very few children. They were about 14 or 15, certainly not below 10 or 12. I did not remain long enough to see all the details. There weren't any very old people apart from a few exceptions. Most of the people who went ashore were middle-aged except a few. Already before this experience, some individual cases had been examined several times at a place where people capable of being supramentalized were examined. I had a few surprises and noted them. I even told some people about it, but the one whom I put ashore today, I saw very distinctly they were middle-aged, neither young nor old, apart from the few exceptions. I do not remain until the end. It was not possible for me to get an exact picture. I do not want to say things to some, not to others. What I can say is the point of view, the judgment was based exclusively on the substance of which the people were made, that is whether they belonged completely to the supramental world, whether they were made of that very special substance. The standpoint taken is neither moral nor psychological. It is probable that the substance their bodies were made of was a result of an inner law, an inner moment which at that time was not in question. At least it is quite clear that the values are very different. When I came back, says our Divine Mother, simultaneously with the recollection of the experience, I knew that the supramental world is permanent, that my presence is permanent there, and that only a missing link was necessary for the connection to be made in the consciousness and the substance, and it is this link which is being forged. Our Divine Mother says, I had the impression, an impression which remained for quite a long time, almost a whole day of an extreme reality, not exactly what the impression that the relation between this world and the other completely changed the standpoint from which things should be evaluated or appraised. This standpoint had nothing mental about it and it gave a strange inner feeling that lots of things we consider good or bad are not really so. It is very clear that everything dependent on the capacity of the things, on their attitude in expressing the supramental world or being in relation with it. It is so completely different, sometimes even altogether contrary to our ordinary appraisal. I recollect one little thing which we usually consider to be bad, how strange it was to see in truth it was something excellent. And other things that we consider to be important have in fact absolutely no importance at all. Whether a thing is like this or like that is not at all important. What is very obvious is that our appraisal of what is divine or undivine is not right. I even laugh to see certain things or our usual feeling of what is anti-divine sees artificial seem based on something that's not true, not living. Besides, what we call life here did not seem living to me compared to that world. Anyway, this feeling should be founded on our relation between the two worlds, on how things make the relation between them easier or more difficult. Our Divine Mother says this would make a great difference in our appraisal of what brings us nearer to the Divine or what separates us from Him. In people too, I saw that what helps them to become supramental or hinders them from it, it is very different from what our usual normal moral notions imagine. I felt how ridiculous we are, says our Divine Mother.